Hello, this is Jerry. I'm playing Oxygen Not Included. This is my Moonlit playthrough on Cycle 448. In the last episode, I started process to freeze water on the left side, and the goal for that was to ultimately be a planning wild sleep. So I'll be able to get the water to turn into ice, and a pip will make uh, or plant sleep wheat in those uh, spots. And I didn't put that everywhere, so anywhere I had other tiles such as uh, sulfur, sandstone, granite, I've left it. But there were many spots that I needed to fill with water, so I've done that. And I've even started a process with an aqua tuner that's uh, close to my base that is cooling down polluted water that's running through this area. So I'm just filling in a couple last little spots of water before I turn the system off. And then just rely on the polluted water to, uh, to cool things down to about minus 15 or so degrees. And I don't want any water pipes to be sitting around when that happens because obviously they're going to break if they get below minus zero. All right. Right now, only the top two floors are getting the uh, polluted water go through it at that uh, minus 13 or 15 or so degrees. So I'm just connecting all the other tiles that are touching water and putting radiant pipes in them. And ultimately going to make a huge circuit for this cold polluted water to go through. And is that as that uh, polluted water goes through those radiant pipes, it's going to freeze those tiles and that's going to interact with water and ultimately freeze that uh, to ice. I'm making that out of lead because I've got a ton of lead in this world. While well, my dupes in the inverted asteroid work on that uh, piping system to cool off water, I'm now having the nuclear power plant, which is effectively 15 steam turbines with uh, around here you can see some Red Bull generators, but in the center of that is going to be a research reactor and that is going to generate a lot of radiation. I'm not going to put it in there in a moment because I've got some uh, ladders in the way, but that's going to generate lots of radiation and lots of heat. So I can get rad bolts and I can get heat to, to turn to power. Also not going to uh, turn all these on. I'm going to have separate switches and I'm going to have 15 red bolt generators, but each switch will control five of them. Water so far at the top has been cooled down to about two degrees. I've started the process of insulating this area that's going to contain sleet wheat ultimately, and I decided it might uh, make more sense to have the pipe go up and down with uh, carrying that polluted, cold polluted water so that coldness doesn't get wasted in the warmer zone on the right of this area. Now that I've got the Rad Bull generators on, I or installed, it's time to remove these ladders and put in the research reactor. Also going to make sure that that research reactor uh, doesn't get turned on initially because I do not want it to be operational until the rest of the infrastructure around it exists to be able to handle the heat that comes from it. In the early days of getting this research reactor to run, I want to control exactly how much enriched uranium goes into it. In some cases, I may only want to give it one kilogram of uh, material. So I've got a sweeper. I'm going to eventually dump some material. I want to be able to control exactly how much. And, and the reason for that is you can't turn the research reactor off. Technically, you can. There's a switch that I'm going to actually put in here very quickly. To, uh, to disable this thing because I don't want my dupes to manually put in any enriched uranium. But what that switch does is it simply tells dupes and the sweeper not to load anything new. But any enriched uranium that has already made it in there will continue to run and uh, cause radiation and heat. And it will continue to do so until it gets uh, run uh, it runs itself out so if you give it a very small amount of material and you want to be able to turn that switch off you just have to wait a short amount of time for it to burn out versus if you got, give it a lot it may take a very long time if you can't handle the heat things can go bad so insulated pipes are being used here they're made out of ceramic that's where water is going to be dumped on that's the cooling system on top and i've got a pipe in the bottom there that i've installed that's going to uh, bring water into the research reactor, which is a very critical source. So in addition to that, you might notice that I've got multiple liquid vents 
I you don't want to have more than five steam turbines uh, together um, on a uh, pipeline because it will get uh, jammed up. So I've actually got three. So three steam turbines has access to uh, a single liquid vent, which will be more than enough. I also have an alternate line going up. I'm going to use some pipes, uh, liquid bridges here to control the direction so it doesn't get confused. But every time water goes out of the steam turbine, it has the option of dumping water on the research reactor and in one of those three vents, or it can also send water up. And this is what's going to be a line that goes directly back inside the research reactor. So I don't have to continually supply new water into the system once it gets up and running. The three on the side, two of the sides, left and right, will be the similar thing, except for it's not going to supply water. It's inside the reactor. It's going to just dump it on top of it. I have three liquid reservoirs that are going to be filled with water. I'm going to make sure that they get filled before that research reactor turns on because if you don't provide water when that uh, machine goes on, you can be in a meltdown situation. So that's not good. I'll start the process for that. Now over on this asteroid, my two steam turbines that are sitting on hot abyssalite has melted away so i should have checked this before i dug out uh, this spot so what i'm going to do i'm just going to hop over this spot and uh, i'll either possibly just operate the two or perhaps i'll bring in some insulated uh, tiles and ceramic tiles to uh, complete with four before these Red Bull generators get access to power, I want to switch them off because this is going to take a lot of power to operate all of them. I'm not going to do that until the uh, steam turbines start generating power, which will take some time. Okay, so over on this this uh, asteroid here, I'm insulating these pipes. I should have really done this from the beginning because the livable area and the rest of the base, I, I have no intention of getting down to minus 15. It's just pointless. So... I really just want to concentrate on the uh, sleet weight area being cold. So there goes insulated pipes. Now they're made out of um, ign igneous rock, not ceramic. I didn't think it was that, that important to fully insulate to those pipes. First pieces of ice have been created and uh, they tend to not to get this way until about minus five degrees. So you can see a pool of water at minus three, minus four before it actually turns to ice. Okay, so in the this uh, research reactor area, the steam turbines, they're going to get very hot. So I am putting two aqua tuners. Yes, I'm going to need two for this system. And I've got some ceramic pipes, insulated ceramic pipes, that are going to take water in and out or some other cooling liquid. I'm just going to put in a power connection for both of them. And what's going to happen is I'm going to have a line that goes through all on top of all the steam turbines, keeping them cool because you want to keep those below 100 degrees. So I just got some tiles for them to run. I'm going to have some liquid reservoirs. I'm most likely going to fill them with water because the temperature range is going to be somewhere between 20 and 80 degrees. So I expect this should work. I've got a liquid shut off to determine whether this uh, water that's going to go around this uh, circuit is uh, is going to go through aqua tuner or not so and then and then i'll have take its temperature of the, the water that comes out of the liquid reservoir to determine whether which way that goes so it either has the option for uh, going into the liquid or into the aqua tuner or just can bypassing it go directly to the liquid reservoir and then back around again. So I'm probably gonna have that set to about 30 or so uh, degrees, any hotter than 30, then go inside. So here I'm just progressing the pipes that are gonna be going in and out of this uh, aqua tuner over here and actually run on top of the steam turbine. I'm gonna insulate them on the right side and on where they get uh, on the left side where it's gonna be freezing temperatures anyways, I'm just gonna have regular pipes bring that uh, very cold polluted water up and down into this system. So that'll, uh, that'll just prevent some cooling loss on the right side of that. Here I'm removing that hot abyssalite and I'm gonna replace that with insulated ceramic tiles. Okay, so what I'm doing here is uh, getting rid of the conveyor 
rails because I don't have enough metal ore anyways. And I think I can operate this thing if I just give it a small amount of rich uranium, turn it on and off. Uh, and I'll get metal ore for conveyor rails later on. The other thing that I'm doing is putting a place in to get rid of nuclear waste because that uh, nuclear re reactor will create quite a bit of nuclear waste over time. So in a test build that I have, I actually had two pumps to the side of that with a hydro sensor to operate when it was needed. And it was needed quite a bit. And operating two pumps takes quite a bit of power. Well, 500 or, or a little bit less than that uh, kilowatts. But uh, what I'm doing here is a different system that doesn't require power. And I'm hoping this will work because it'll save a little bit. Not that I necessarily need power savings, but... I mean, if I can avoid two pumps running all the time, why not? So I have a hydro sensor that's going to set to half a kilogram. Uh, and, and basically say if there's more than that of uh, nuclear waste, then open those doors and start draining it out. And once it starts to get below that, then you can close the door again. I'm starting to run out of work on this uh, world because it's more about waiting for the pipes to bring... Uh, freezing to that uh, water to turn to ice. So I'm going to send one of the dupes over. This is going to be a loud sleeper, so I'm making sure they specifically sleep there on the left. Over in this system, I'm delivering water to a couple key different places. Two of the liquid reservoirs, that's going to be the water that's going to go around this entire system. But I also want to deliver water on top of the steam turbines. But I don't want it to be an unlimited supply or full set of water. I want it to get, be under 100 kilograms or so. I essentially don't want to flood those machines, but I want to get around 75 to 100 kilograms of water on all those three areas where steam turbines exist. So that's why I'm bringing in the shutoff, uh, wa liquid shutoffs with uh, switches so I can turn it off when it gets to the appropriate value. And that's all to do with cooling, keeping these steam turbines cool as they operate. Okay, so now that the uh, hot bis light is gone, bringing in the insulated ceramic tiles, and that is a uh, spot. Oh, I'm out of plastic, so I'll have to go get that. Um, but I'll bring that over. And the other bit is I'm gonna have to run the all the pipes that uh, that I need through this small little area, and it may take a few bit of iterations to get all of this uh, right. Now that the hydro sensors are in place, I'm putting it to uh, set it to open the doors when there's more than 50 grams of liquid on that hydro sensor. I'm going to need to bring water up to this zone and uh, I'm running out. I want to aim for 40 kilograms inside that liquid reservoir. So not, not quite, not a lot. And that reason for that is when the steam turbines produce enough power that the battery is filled, I want to actually stop. I want to actually be able to remove all the hot steam from underneath it. And the more water you have in there, the longer that takes, just being wasteful. So basically the uh, battery would say, okay, I don't need any more power, but I'm still gonna be generating a lot of uh, power and taking the heat away from on top of that base. So it's uh, it makes a lot more sense in this case, if you just give it a small amount of power, I find somewhere between 300 and 400 kilograms to be a good number to uh, shoot for. Once I reach 400 kilograms in the liquid reservoir, I shut off the uh, liquid shut off. And now I'm going to destroy the, the path that goes into that. And once one of the dupes takes that out, then I'll continue to drop water on top of the steam turbines, aiming for about 75 to 100 kilograms of water sitting on top of those. Okay, so this is where I'm trying to do some fancy pipe work. And the goal is to have an in and out pipe for that uh, liquid uh, or that aqua tuner. And that's going to keep the top of the steam turbines cool. But there also needs to be a line that goes from the liquid reservoir down inside the underneath the steam turbine. So that is going to actually eventually have a liquid shutoff to be able to control that when water goes in there. Because if I've got enough power, I don't want to push water in there. Otherwise, it's just a waste of the heat that I've got down there. So the rule is I don't want to send pipes through anything that's super hot. So I've got a hot... This uh, below me and above me in that uh, aqua tuner area. So I just have to be very careful about how I arrange all this together. For the nuclear power plant that I'm setting up here, I now have enough water in the two, two liquid reservoirs on the side, as well as on top of all the steam turbines. So the excess water that I've got in this pipe, I'm just going to send them over in this liquid reservoir on the bottom. 
and then I'm going to complete the circuit such that I've got a pipe that goes all around, uh, visits every sing top of every single steam turbine in a radiant pipe, and uh, makes a visit by path or uh, through a liquid or actually two liquid aqua tuners, skipping them if the water is cool enough. So urgent situation on my hands. I have uh, to deal with this uh, very quickly. So I'm, uh, I've got some water that was probably destroyed in one of the pipes. I wasn't careful about having that not fall down here, but I've got some really hot material. Just making sure that goes to a bin on the top. My dupes are just about to put them inside the base. I don't want that to happen, so I'm going to cancel or uh, undo the bins there and make sure they specifically bring this hot material on top so it doesn't interact with that water causing steam anymore. Okay, just putting the last little finishing touches on this confusing section over here. Again, there's uh, really just two lines. Temporary line, well, I've got a temporary line of water going in initially. That is going to, to be turned off. But there's just a very short line going from that steam or from the liquid reservoir down to that uh, spot down there. And that's going to have a uh, liquid shut off with a battery. So I'm going to actually have to put a battery in a, in a spot where I can keep it cool. So bring it down here, make it out of steel for the time being. And I'm going to put that through an AND gate. And you notice that I've got a temperature gauge inside. I'm basically going to say if things get way too hot, let's say around uh, six or 700 degrees, bring in some water so it cools things down. You don't want the temperature gauge and the liquid vent itself to melt because they actually can if it gets way way too hot so that's what the temperature gauge is and that is uh, in with an OR gate so if it's either way too hot or the battery indicates its need of power let's put some water down there and that will ultimately turn those steam turbines on generating some power for us okay just noticed a flaw i made here and i did this one earlier somewhere in my uh, playthrough as well uh, the liquid shutoff if you want to have a two optional pass the the output from it has to be the input of liquid shutoff so i had that in the wrong order and i made the exact same mistake over here so the output of liquid shutoff should have one direction but the um the one the alternate path has to be on the input of the liquid shutoff so when the liquid shutoff is off it will just continue on down the line and go directly inside the liquid reservoir otherwise it'll actually go inside the liquid tuner or the aqua tuner. So this is an important feature that I'm adding. Ultimately, you're going to recycle the water in this overall system, but you never want to get in a situation where you're out of water. So I'm just putting an alternate line to uh, throw extra water on in only if the system is completely out. And that'll just pre help prevent a nuclear meltdown. So starting the process of sealing everything off, I might actually be able to turn this whole system on pretty soon, which is exciting. Okay, so one of the things that I'm going to get from this uh, nuclear power plant is red bolts. And I'll need to be able to get the actual red bolts outside of this uh, huge chamber area that I'm currently shutting uh, off or closing off. And I need to have that go through either a joint plate, a red bolt joint plate, or have it go through some sort of liquid area. It just can't hit a solid tile because obviously it's just going to explode and be wasted. So I'm going to do that here, and I'm going to put a reflector, red bolt reflector in such that, uh, actually, I'm going to have to uh, direct all the red bolts uh, generators to point in the right direction. So they're all going to ultimately point towards this bottom right area and go through this red bolt joint plate. Now that joint plate, as it heats up, is going to melt, but it's going to melt in such a way that it's going to make uh, liquid material that's going to prevent steam from escaping. So that, uh, that won't last forever, but it will do its job either in this form or in this melted liquid form. Okay, so I filled this to the top, but the very top tile in inside this chamber does not have, uh, it just has about 100 or so kilograms of water. If that was full, if it was up to a thousand, that would mean that liquid vent would not be able to push any new water in, meaning that steam turbine would become backed up and not be able to cool the overall system, even once it turns to steam. So make sure that you never fill up this system such that the top tiles are a hundred percent full. So they're about hundred kilograms. Uh, this won't be an issue. The rest of it is just making sure I've got a full circuit that goes all around this area to keep both the steam turbine on the top and at the ones the four on the bottom cool. 
there's no point in turning on the research reactor until I can ensure that I'll actually be able to make use out of the red bolts that are going to be coming out of this system. So I'm going to put some ra um, uh, rocket platforms close to it because as the red bolts travel, uh, they actually wear out. The amount of uh, red bolts actually depletes as it travels. So the closest that closer the rocket is, I'm going to have some red bolt uh, rockets uh, engines there that'll be filled as well as interplanetary launchers, research station, and a diamond press, ultimately. So this is what it looks like when the system is running. I can see the battery indicated that it needed to send water in that started generating some power, and then eventually that uh, battery indicated it's full and it would stop sending power down. That means that the aqua tuner can now run at night when the solar panels start running out of energy. So that will allow me to cool things off a little bit quicker. I won't have to have a, a break in the system uh, during the night period. Okay, at this point I realized that I didn't have the technology to build Radbolt engines. So I'm gonna specify the research. I guess I'll use the Radbolts to do that research. So I wanna make significant changes to the pipes over here, but I don't want all that polluted water to be dumped out and make a mess where I've got water. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna build two liquid reservoirs and have all the polluted water be stored uh, temporarily in there while I make some changes to the pipes and then I'll be able to send the water, polluted water back out into the system once I've completed these changes. It uh, now seems clear to me that I'm not going to be able to set up this nuclear power plant in such a way that I can seal it off and never worry about the dupes ever having to go inside. So what I'm doing is I'm building a narrow path that's going to go up and go uh, enter into the uh, nuclear core of the nuclear power plant, that giant chamber. That's going to have a whole lot of steam, but it also will have radiation, at least when the Red Bull or the research reactor is on. So this whole idea is just to prevent an excess amount of steam being lost. So as, uh, as the door opens up over here, I'm going to put the door right there. You're not going to have steam just fire off into space. It'll go into that little chamber going down and it will still be wasted, but it won't be wasted as much as if I just plainly had a door on the left. So that was what that is about. I'm also going to put in some uh, suits, obviously, from for them to wear. I'm just going to reroute some power so I can continue to get to this. Getting low on metal ore. So I'm going to delete or uh, destroy some some uh, wiring where I don't need it. Now this is where the dupes are actually going to enter from this point on. They're going to go down, I guess they'll have to go through the stable, which is fine, and they'll have to go through some hydrogen. Now because they're not going to be going there all the time, I don't really care that there's hydrogen. I want to maintain the hydrogen that's there because those critters actually like the hydrogen that helps them build their scale or rebuild their scales. Okay, so now that I have uh, started the process of draining all the pipes with polluted water inside that spot, so that's going to start to go into those liquid reservoirs, I can now build the pipe system such that it goes in a full cycle. And I'm going to have it start off from the bottom and make it wrap its way back and forth, visiting every single set of tile that has water and that is going to bring the temperature down to well below uh, minus 5, maybe even minus 10 degrees, ultimately changing that to ice wherever it's needed. The rest of the temperature where I don't have ice but want to plant some wild plants, I need to make sure that's at least 5 degrees or below. But uh, it will, it will every single spot where I'm going to plant some sleet wheat will, I'm, I'm certain, going to be in the negative temperatures. Okay, so the other thing is I actually want to have this system running even after that uh, the ice is frozen. That's because I'm going to put a lot of automation machine here that's going to slowly heat it up. And I need to make sure that this ice doesn't melt. So this is not just a temporary system to freeze the ice. It's also going to maintain the temperature to be such that the ice won't melt and have uh, a situation where any of the tiles that don't have ice, the sleet wheat that's on it, won't stop growing because it gets, uh, gets higher than five degrees. While those pipe changes are being made in the home world, my dupes are just putting the finaling, final touches on this little uh, pathway that goes up. 
that's going to have some drywalling again just preventing excess amount of steam from going down in this world you can see i'm now directing the inputs to the coal to pollute water to go down so it's going to first make a visit on the very bottom floor and by or just go through every single floor on as it travels upward um, making bringing coolness with it it's ultimately creating a lot of ice and a lot of space to grow sleet wheat in the future. Okay, because it's possible to have, uh, I may need to have my dupes to go inside this chamber area with a nuclear pl power uh, plant while it's operating. Um, my preference is to have them go in when it's not, but because it's potentially possible, I'm gonna put in more than just Atmo suits. Because I've got a ton of lead, this is gonna be easy. Uh, I just need the space for it because these machines uh, the, these stations are quite big. I'm going to build three of them. I'm going to have to build uh, or move that ladder over a little bit. And that way, at least three dupes can go in there to make changes as it's operating and not uh, not take the radiation damage. Because unlike the, the little bit of radiation that comes from the sun at the top, this is going to be a crazy amount of radiation. So I definitely need this protection, at least when the research reactor is operating. Just like the Atmo suits, of course, this system is going to need oxygen. So bring in oxygen line from uh, my base that's producing it. Just going to reuse this one that was used to be used for chlorine and connect that up with all three of them. And I'll need to be able to connect that on the other side over here. So when I first turn this research reactor on, I'm not going to be able to turn all these Brad Bolt generators on because it's just going to be too much power consumption. So I've got to set it up. I destroyed the actual automation wire such that uh, one of the switches only turns a single one on. And that, uh, that will allow me to get a little bit of red bolts while it initially operates until my actual power plant there. I am destroying the automation wire and just directing the other one on the top. So that will ultimately just turn the one on and only consume about the 500 or so uh, units of power. I'm also switching everything to have um, granite tiles over there because it interacts with the temperature a little bit better. I want to take the temperature from the center of that out. Okay, so notice a little bit of water has gone missing from a couple places, so just making sure that gets filled. I now have a pipeline that goes and visits every single tile on the left side that needs to have frozen water. So I can turn on the liquid reservoir that's uh, blocking everything. And that's gonna start to bring this really cold polluted water all around to eventually freeze all those, uh, those water tiles, turn them to ice and maintain them as ice as time goes on. Just adding a little bit of extra insulation because there's no point in heating up the right side of this base. I wanna keep all the coldness on the left side as, as much as I can going to start the process of building some lead suits and going to set the worn lead suits to build uh, forever and specify these uh, lead suit docks to have the actual lead suits brought in once they're created of course. So here's what it looks like polluted water going all through this uh, area and it's not really the fact that it's polluted water but it's the minus 15 degrees that i care about now that i've got that there's not a lot to do so i'm going to start to bring the tubes back to the home world so they can concentrate on this nuclear power plant i also realize that i don't really need this polluted water oxygen system anymore i want to save sand for glass so i'm going to completely destroy it. not that i need the area now but uh, i might as well get this spot back for the future Okay, so I don't want to turn the research reactor on, as I mentioned, until I have a use for it. So I'm going to build a re red bolt reflector and a red bolt joint plate such that it's going to bring that to down here. Now, I can't, can't build that on top of heavy watt wire, so just bring the heavy watt wire up a little bit. I'm going to put that joint plate underneath it, and that is going to point down towards the material research station, and that will keep that machine good and full with uh, red bolts so any research that relies on the material of research station as long as i can operate that uh, research reactor is going to happen very quickly from this point on so now i'm bringing in the material research station itself and that's going to be lined up with the rebels so those go uh, firing into that 
that spot on the left of the material research station. I'm going to put an automation wire to determine when I want rad bolts sent down. So this is different from what I built in the past when I had a rad bolt sit in an infant loop. This time when I've got an excess amount of rad bolts, I'm going to use them for other things such as the rad bolt engine and uh, the uh, interplanetary launcher. So the logic is going to be set up. I'm going to put an OR gate with two dupe sensors and put that through a NOT gate and basically say if there's no dupes in the area, then you can operate. You can send rad bolts down. I'm going to put that with an AND gate with the output of uh, from the material research station. And the material research station sends a true signal when it's full, which is the opposite of what I want. So actually, that's why I'm putting it through a NOT gate. So both these things have a NOT gate. And that goes through an AND gate. And this basically ultimately saying the logic that I want. If I'm in need of rad bolts and there's no dupes in the area, then yeah, you can start firing rad bolts down. When dupe walks in the area or this machine is full, it will then send a false signal up there. And then rad bolts will bypass the reflector and go to the rad bolt engines and some of the other things. Once, of course, I've got the research. So that is uh, that setup. Just needs to have some power and that'll be operational. When I do turn the research reactor on, currently switched off, I want to control exactly how much enriched uranium is put into this system. So I can't have the dupes do it. I'm going to actually have to block this place off temporarily, at least while this is operating. And I'm going to have an automated system to deliver that enriched uranium. And I've got an automated sweeper in there to be able to actually have it load it inside that. So I've got that conveyor rail that's going to go in. I'm going to specify a bin in the area that's going to load exactly one kilogram of enriched uranium and have an auto sweeper and conveyor loader bring that in. And the purpose for that is the ability to turn that research reactor off and have it burn the rest, the, little, the tiny amount of enriched uranium rather than have it run for a very long time and potentially overheat. When the teleportation system is ready, I'm going to send another dupe over. So at this point, I only have one dupe remaining. I've got nine dupes in my home world. So this is a big moment, specifying one kilogram of enriched uranium to be dropped off in this bin. And then once, once the dupe fills that up with a tiny bit of enriched uranium, I will then dump it on the floor. So there it is. They put it in the bin. Can dump that on the floor. The auto sweeper has put it into conveyor loader that goes up the conveyor rail. And now, uh, by the way, I've got this area shut off with the uh, door so the dupes can't go in here. I'm going to turn it on. And I'm going to turn on the uh, one Red Bull generator. So they're actually they're closing the door. They, they could have gone in. Notice the auto sweeper didn't run or didn't load it. That was because it was waiting for one of the dupes actually to put it inside there. So tons of radiation. I, oh, I, um, yeah, okay, so I destroyed the automation wire on one of the Red Bolt generators, so it's an always on situation, which wasn't what, exactly what I wanted, but I'll let uh, two run and see if my power system can keep up for a little bit of time anyway. Since I now have a lot of material research uh, that I can do with this tons of Red Bolts, I need to start generating more data banks to get the virtual planetarium running. So I need to load that rocket with food. I'm going to specify that uh, food bin or the, the um, ration bin that's inside their box that uh, is going to load only barbecue meat that I have swept. Because I want to make sure that the barbecue meat that gets in there is frozen. That's the only way to make it last forever because if it's not frozen, it'll eventually go bad, bring, bring in polluted oxygen into that space on the space on the bottom right of the rocket and that's going to remove the vacuum so only frozen food can go in there but if i do get the frozen food in there it's going to last forever so i can send a dupe up here and let's say if i've got uh 10,000 or 20,000 uh, calories of food they can last 10 or 20 cycles from the food perspective and i also have a lot of allergies so from an oxygen perspective it'll uh, they'll last quite a bit of while too i'm going to build a Oh, what's that machine called? The carbon dioxide skimmer. That's going to remove a little bit of carbon dioxide that's built up and any future carbon dioxide that the astronaut and operator that's inside there is going to uh, produce, that'll take care of that. 
So just waiting, and you might need a little bit more barbecue meat. So manually hunt some of those uh, pips and get them to load this with food. There we are. So about 8,000 calories. Um, I'll wait for, for more food before I send this rocket up. Oh, I guess this carbon skim skimmer needs some power. So that'll be connected. And I've got this set up so that the pipe from out, out uh, from that is going to actually leak up into space when the uh, pilot and operator goes up. So pretty much all day long, and they'll have all the oxygen and food that they need, the dupe that goes up in here. They even have the process, there it, is, it turns on now. It's going to get, remove that carbon dioxide. And they can stay up there pretty much as long as I've got enough food for them. And uh, I won't fully fill that bin, but what, what I'll rather do, I'll just have the dupe go up for about 15 or 20 cycles to produce quite a bit of data banks, have them come back down, maybe enjoy some the minis of the main base, and then send them up again. So this is, uh, I need one dupe that has the operational skill and is, and is a pilot. I'm going to choose a location just outside this planetoid because they don't have to go far. They just uh, need to be technically up in space to operate the machine to create the data banks. And they can, while that dupe goes up there, I can do my other research. And once uh, every now and then I'll have this this uh, rocket land and the dupes can take the data banks into the virtual planetarium and bin that's next to it so that I can get on with uh, completing all the research in oxygen not include it. Okay, so to end this episode off, I'm just gonna get them to remove their suit when they're up here. But to end this episode off, just point out that I've burnt through the one kilogram of enriched uranium, which is nice in the sense that it shows that I can turn it off. Oh, the system over on the old system, uh, might as well turn that off. Now I can't turn off that other Red Bull generator. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna connect that with automation wire and temporarily open this spot before I turn it back on. All right. So a while back, I was wondering whether I get the nuclear power plant or the sleazy wheat, sleazy wheat, sleet wheat plant it. Uh, clearly, the sleet wheat system is going to take a lot longer, which I didn't necessarily expect. M mostly, that's just waiting for the polluted water to go through and cool it off such that it actually turns to ice. But I do have the research reactor running, and I've got it set up in such a way that I can give it the exact amount of enriched uranium. So if I want to turn it off because it's starting to get too hot, I can do that and just get the that system running and producing a little bit of rad bolts as I need it. Actually, that has given me a really good idea for some future asteroids. If I want to have this system running, I don't need 15 steam turbines there to uh, cool it off and have it run forever. I can just give any future ones, just create maybe two or three steam turbines, set up the system to give it just the amount of enriched uranium get the red bolts out of it anyway that is for the future but i do want the 15 steam turbines on this one because i want a lot of power in the future this is where the dupes are going to live they're going to have a higher quality of life going forward anyway if you want to see some of the other stuff that i do like subscribe and i'll see you in a future video